Hi everyone! Welcome to Barb Ross Kitchen. I must apologize for not having done videos for quite some time now. Uh, I've had a lot of personal changes. We've moved, we've sold our place, we've moved, and we've purchased a, a property in Carameas. So that's where we're headed next. Um, so of course we're temporarily now in this temporary kitchen of mine, which is beautiful. And uh, yeah, so we've rented a place here till April. So we hope to have our new home done by then. And I'll be sharing some video footage of when that, uh, when it gets closer to being done. <laughs> but I appreciate your patience with me. Also, you know, of course, with everything that's going on in the world right now, it's that's also been on a lot of our minds. And um, as you can see, I'm sending a message on my shirt. <laughs> this is what I think we need to do more of, okay, in society. But regardless of that, what I'd like to do today is show you how to make granola, raw vegan granola. Oh, and I forgot to tell, mention something huge. I just, this is the other thing that's kept me busy for months now, is I finally did it. I finally wrote a recipe book. <laughs> so I just released it actually yesterday, so I'll be including the link in the uh, the comment section, uh, on the comment section, the description of this video. So definitely go to that link if you want to purchase my ebook. I've done, a, I think, a reasonable price. There's 21 recipes. Four are cooked vegan recipes, and the rest are all raw vegan. Okay, because that's the lifestyle I'm choosing. Um, I've definitely seen a difference in the winter now. I kind of like feel not so great with eating some cooked foods a little bit more so because it's cold here. But uh, so I can't wait, you know, for the hot weather and the more fruit available. Um, but I'm definitely still doing my raw um, breakfast for sure. And then usually like a raw lunch or dinner, one of the two. So yeah, but uh, we all got to do what we got to do, right? I still believe in, you know, healthy food. That's the, that's the key and just um, not you know, processed foods and oils and all these other things that aren't good for us, right? Healthy fats and everything like that. And of course, being outside as much as possible. <laughs> right now, it's a little difficult because it's a little hotter, but, or sorry, colder, but uh, today it's a beautiful day. It's really sunny, so that's really warm my heart. And yeah, so I want to pop on and do this video for you. So I want to show you how to make, um, you know, one type of a raw vegan um, granola. I just kind of created it on my own. Um, so I think you can change the, you know, the ingredients, however you choose, but I just want to show you how I do it. And then what I do is I actually store them in jars like this and I keep them on the counter, right? So whenever you want it, it's available. So as I get low, which is starting now, this is when I go to make some. And it this lasts like, I don't know, it depends on you know how much you have, but I have like two jars of it, two different types. So like, I don't know, a couple months, really, because we don't have this all the time. This is like, you know, maybe I'll have like twice a week or once a week, I'll have this on my fruit in the morning, but rarely do we put it like on everything or anything like that. So, but I just like to have it available, especially if you have guests or anything like that. Or if you just have, want a snack and you just grab it out of the jar and eat it, right? So, and then I, the other thing I do is, this is what I would recommend too, is canning some uh, walnuts. So I keep that in a jar on the counter as well. Um, so all you do with this is you toss it in maple syrup and then you put in the dehydrator and you just wait, you know, a few hours till it's crunchy. And then you've got some beautiful walnuts that are candied, right? It's hard to tell, but when you taste it, you'll, you'll know. So that's a great option for a raw vegan option as well. And it's, you know, you can pop it onto nice cream or you can put it on your, your fruit in the morning. You know, there's lots of little ways you can use this. So um, I even have used it when I've done a vegan meal and I've had some gluten-free um, spaghetti with broccoli. That's actually going to be in my ebook. So I highly recommend that because it's delicious. It's one of my favorite ways to make spaghetti. And then I pop some walnuts on top for that crunch. And it's just such a great combination with broccoli, believe it or not. So, all right, so let's get to it. All right, hopefully you can see 
everything okay? I might have to adjust the camera so you can see the food processor. So all you're gonna need for this recipe, and again, I'm not a big measurer, but I did it for the sake of showing you. But again, just use what you have. So here's a key too. These were all free, by the way, these walnuts. Look how beautiful they are. They're huge, beautiful walnuts, free. Because there's many people that have big walnut trees, they don't use them for some reason, and they don't spray their walnuts, because I always make sure of that first. And then they're more than happy for you to come and pick their walnuts for them, so then take them home. So why not do that, people? Because these are expensive if you buy them, right? So I, I say go for it. And we have like bags that we have now in the freezer and they're gonna last us like a year, right? And so every year we do this. And then you, at any time you want walnuts, they're in the freezer. So that's a, a big tip. So here's a cup of walnuts. So we're gonna put that in the food process. Sorry if there was a little bit of a glitch. My battery went down. I guess I should have checked that first. <laughs> Let me just make sure it's all plugged in here. Where that happens again okay here we go so now I've just positioned the camera so you can see what I'm doing here all right so that's the food processor okay so I've got one cup of raw walnuts one cup of raw almonds but again you can choose the nuts that you decide to do I've done usually pecans some of the times as well I just thought it'd be different and choose something else this time so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna start off with chopping these up a little bit. So bear with the noise here. Just to make it a little easier on everything. And then we're going to add our dates. So that's what's gonna help combine this as well. And I think I've got about seven here, seven pitted dates. But again, you can add more. I've got some on standby in case I need them. But it's roughly five to seven dates, depending on how many nuts there are in there too. Um, so what that does, they stick together. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make one of my options, but um, I'll tell you how to make the other one. Basically the only difference is you're gonna add coconut in this one and no, no chocolate nibs in this one. And then the other option that I make is with the chocolate and no coconut, so. But again, you can do whatever you choose. Sometimes I'll put chocolate and coconut. Actually, maybe we'll do that just to show you guys. So approximately, let's say, depends how much coconut you like. I think about a tablespoon, maybe, maybe a couple tablespoons. But again, depends on you, right? So adjust it to how your taste buds are, right? And so now we've got cacao nibs, right? So I get these from, um, real raw foods here in Naramata, and they last forever. So, but you can get these everywhere, I believe now. So let's say I probably do two to three tablespoons. Again, depends how much chocolate you want in there, right? Chocolate taste, I should say. Um, definitely a healthier option than actual chocolate, especially if it has dairy. Um, this is Watkins Vanilla, love it. So about a teaspoon. This one is just under a teaspoon because it's pretty, it's pretty strong. And then what else I put in is maple syrup. So this is another thing I get at Real Raw Foods. So I would say probably two tablespoons. So this also helps it all combine together and it also uh, kind of candies the nuts, right? That's how you candy them on their own. So I like putting that in. Alrighty. Oops. I have a nut. Okay. And then the last thing I put in is some psyllium husk. And that also helps combine it. You can put flax is great. I used flax one time. So either one. I just had this handy. So I think it's about a tablespoon. tablespoon of that um, but again flax is fine too or chia seeds with water that's like an egg so it kind of combines everything and that's pretty much it so now we're gonna just blend it up until it's about you know not totally really finely chopped but like so it's chunky 
So let me bear with the noise here. So it's still pretty crumbly. So I'm gonna add, mm, smells so good you guys. I wish you could smell this. So if it's a bit too crumbly, then you're gonna add another date or two. So I've got them here handy. We use a ton of dates, by the way. All right, so healthy for you. We put them in our smoothies, we put them in our salad dressings. Okay, I'm putting four more in. Let's see how that works. They're kind of small. All right, blend away. So now it looks a lot stickier. Still crumbly, but, but stickier. Yeah, I don't want to blend it too much more because then it'll be too small. But you can kind of get an idea. All right. So now I think what I ha what happened was normally I do a cup of, so half a cup of each nut. So I actually made a lot more than I normally would have. But just so you know. So that's why we had to add more dates. Because normally if you're just doing a cup of nuts, then you're not having to add more dates. So this is why. I just realized that. <laughs> so that's okay. I have a lot of granola and we'll use it up, believe me. Okay, so let me just pop this over here. So now we're going to take that and we're going to put it on our dehydrator tray here. All right. So literally you're just going to throw it on. All right. So it came out a little on the thinner side, but that's okay. What's gonna happen is it's gonna clump together when it's in the dehydrator for that long. And you're gonna put this at 115 degrees so it stays raw, okay? And I just kind of move around a little bit, but you kind of keep it together because it's gonna clump together, okay? As it dries and kind of roasts, if you know what I mean. Um, so usually I think I keep it in, I'm just trying to remember now, probably at least four to six hours. And then I just kind of check it and kind of, you can kind of, you don't have to really flip it around, but you could if you want to kind of, you know, um, make it a little quicker. Sometimes it helps the dehydrator, but really you can just leave it on a dehydrator sheet and put it in your dehydrator and away you go, you know, four to five hours later. You've got beautiful granola and you just pop it in one of those jars that I showed you and that's it. So now what I wanted to show you was I prepared, so I haven't even had my breakfast yet, which isn't, it's kind of more typical now because I try and wait till later. Um, and so I prepared a breakfast that I'm actually going to have my granola that I made from before. Yeah. So this is kind of what you do. You just put in some fruit that you like. I've got bananas, blueberries, and um, one apple in here. So, and then I've got my milk. One sec. So I made this milk, and I just want to show you how easy it is. And I just put it in the fridge. I make it in the blender, right, in my Nutribullet. And all I did was I put about that much, so it's like a one-fourth cup of hemp seeds, or maybe three tablespoons of hemp seeds, and then water and a little bit of the vanilla, the Watkins vanilla, and now I've got a vanilla milk. So, and I just keep it in the fridge for whenever I need it. And so for this, sometimes I just have it dry with a little bit of maple syrup, and that's fine too, or sometimes I like to pour. So you can see this milk, and it's so good, especially when it's cold. All right, so you gotta have cold milk. So I've had it in the fridge this morning. And you can see how delicious that is. Yeah. And it's so awesome, because sometimes, you know, you don't always wanna have a smoothie in the morning or a juice. Sometimes you just need that little extra. And this is a little extra. 
So, and it's so good, so good and very filling, right? Because the fat in it is very filling. So, yeah, and so you just kind of have to monitor your fat for the day. That's the, the harder part for me to do because <laughs> I love fat, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so this is a healthy fat, though, so that makes me feel good. So I hope you enjoy this um, recipe. It's very easy. Um, leave some comments when you make it, and I hope you enjoy. And don't forget to click on my link below for my ebook. And I hope you guys enjoy it. It's all my favorite recipes, my go-tos. So I hope you enjoy them. See you again.